The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all, dear heart dwellers. This is a very important message tonight. Uh, it's bringing together many loose ends, things that have been floating around in my mind and unresolved questions, I guess you could say. And uh, the Lord brought all these things together tonight and gave me some clarity. So I'm going to share that with you. My mind has been mulling over the details of dreams and messages from the last weeks. And I've needed to get clarification from you, Lord. He began, Yes, I've been listening to the musings of your heart all day long, all throughout the night, and not missing a thing, Claire. All the conjectures, etc. How many of them came from me, do you suppose? Well, a lot, I guess. Maybe even all of them? Well, that's kind of what I wanted to clarify. I don't want to ask for the portions of others, but I would like to see the entire fabric coming together, Lord. He continued, So many sad stories, so many tragedies. It's almost too much, even for your God to handle, let alone spread around to his bride. Sweet Claire, I don't want to talk about the details of these events yet, and I know you want to represent me in clarity and put to flight things that are not of me and just concoct it to scare people. I wish I could say the reports are way over-exaggerated, but I'm afraid I can't. In fact, they are way worse. But let me try and prepare you for what is coming. You see, these souls on this channel, many of them, are gifted with a completely laid down life, completely given to me, no matter what the cost. I wanted them here because I knew some would pay a very high price to support the gathering of souls into my bosom. You have many here who are very mature and wish only to live or die for me, according to my will. They have lived in this world long enough to know how very worthless it is, and they're ready to graduate. But in their hearts, they want to take others with them, and these opportunities to die with the masses of sinners and unsaved is their way of thanking me for my sacrifice on the cross. Oh, this is not understood very well on earth, but before they were born, there was indeed an agreement that some day they would give their lives for me. This was their free will offering, Claire. I did not force this upon anyone. But I did inform them, and they did consent. You see, my bride will be united with me in life and in death. This was not an easy decision to make, but from their perspective in heaven, it was the most wonderful thing they could do for me. No one likes pain or suffering, but even these things seemed insignificant to them at the time. Yet I will spare them much, and as you have surmised, repentance and mass will break out immediately after these events. I had inferred that to you when I told you about one of your daughters. Now that does not negate what I said about the great revival, the one that will follow the rapture. This will be my last call to repentance before the rapture. Lord, please help me. And at this point, let's just say I was listening to all these things and trying to sort them out. And I didn't want to assign any answers to what he was saying. I didn't want my mind to jump in and fill in the blank. I was being really cautious, and I went and received communion and sat with the Lord for a moment. The moment I received communion, I heard days. There will be days between the first event and the rapture. Those who've been standing back and withstanding me and my lordship in their obstinate pride will be given a chance. Some will respond. Others become even more hardened, if you can believe that. My spirit will be poured out profusely on mankind 
to convict them of their sins. There will no longer be any who don't know right from wrong, who don't know their left from their right hand, so to speak. I'm doing this as a great act of mercy, and those who perish in these events are co-laborers in the field, giving their very lives that their brothers and sisters may follow them into eternity. That is another reason the dead in Christ will be raptured first. They gave their all, and they certainly deserve to be the very first to be resurrected. I was receiving all of this message with great caution, lest a familiar spirit deceive me, especially when it comes to talking about time frames. That can be a real pit to get into, and our minds can deceive us, and the enemy can deceive us too, so I was being ever so careful. But I was really beginning to connect with the Lord and to have a peace that it was indeed Him. Besides, why would He mislead me? What is He to gain from that? This channel is all about the love of God, His love for us, our love for Him shown to our brothers. If He truly wants that message to stand, I don't see how He could allow me to lead anyone astray. Nevertheless, Jesus, I trust in you. I believe you are faithful to give us a fish and not a snake when we come to you this hungry for answers. You see, heart dwellers, I struggle too with discernment. I know I'm not worthy, but his mercy is by far greater than my unworthiness. And for 35 years, he's been faithful in his promises to Ezekiel and I. I never conceived of a ministry this size. I never sought it. All I sought was to do his will day after day, feeding the poor, recording music to share, and backing up Ezekiel sometimes when we would play at prayer groups. And with all my heart from day one, all I really wanted was to tell everyone about the inconceivable love Jesus has for us and that he is the truth and the only way Yet he promised me that someday he'd reach the world through me. That all my suffering and hard lessons would benefit others and I'd be able to tell them about his love and that I just needed not to grow weary in well-doing and in the end, my obedience would bear fruit. So you see, he has a track record with me. I believe him. I trust him. And all of his words to me have come to pass. He's proven himself faithful in all his ways. The Lord was hiding me in his quiver for this time. And he was testing me to see if I would be happy to be a little nobody nowhere doing nothing but loving him. And that was his preparation to bring me into this ministry. He really, really humbled me and continues to do that. He brought me to the point where I said, all that matters is you, Jesus. All that matters is what you want. So I believe his words to me because he's proven himself. At this point, the Lord continued, Oh, I see the light dawning in your eyes, dear Claire. You're receiving my words to you in faith. And at that moment, I was thinking uh, back on something I'd noticed on, on someone's channel, just a remark that someone made about me. And the Lord said, I'm sorry for the cruelty of those who hate you without reason, my love. My heart aches with yours, and indeed, it is a good offering for their sanctification. Rather than allowing that to poison your heart, always react in charity. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And I had come into prayer with an aching heart after having stumbled upon those who've lied about my relationship with the Lord and his teachings. Oh, my brothers and sisters, count the cost when you receive the graces of God. Persecution, lies, calumny, they come with the territory. And you'll find that the greatest pain you'll ever feel is to see the Lord's graces mocked and turned away when he in his consummate kindness has showered souls with graces 
and invitations to come closer, and they turn away. There's nothing, nothing I've ever experienced that's more bitter than that. Jesus continued here, But I have to tell you that I have brought to you quite an assortment of seasoned warriors for truth and laid down lovers. That's a Heidi Baker term. Because I want the many who visit here to mature quickly through their example. They have found a home here, and no amount of lying or calumny is going to pry them away and out of my heart or this channel, because my sheep know my voice, and jealousy will not rule over them. They have matured in understanding, and are at peace with their positions in the body. They are the ones covering you with prayers, and drawing all men to me. Yes, they have quite an influence on this channel, with their prayers and examples. And all you can do is pray for those pitiable souls that find fault with what I'm teaching. Pray, pray, pray. They are indeed a sorry lot, many blinded by jealousy and others by fear. If only they knew. I called them here so they could grow and come forth out of their insecurities, out of their fears, and into my arms where I administer healing and profound peace and acceptance of how beautiful they truly are to me. But now they will have to wait for another time, another opportunity to embrace me without fear. Oh, Jesus, I wish I could have gotten to know each and every one of those who visit our channel and in some way encourage them. Sometimes I'm very sad indeed that I can't stay on comments for hours. I really, really enjoy the people who come here. He answered me, I wish you could do it all, but you are limited by your illness and time, and in fact, even that I'm using. So don't worry, Claire. I love these with all my heart and will bring them into the banqueting table of my arms even though they do not understand it now. In any case, I wanted you to know that many of the souls who will perish in these tragedies are in fact very special believers, very, very special, and their reward in heaven will be a portion of the harvest that will follow upon these events. In that moment, I will embrace them with ecstatic joy and warm arms, and forever they will be with me. They have nothing to fear and everything to rejoice over as their time draws near. I'll tell you guys, some of you are really brave. I don't know if I could face what you guys are facing. Um, I think the Lord would have to keep it a secret from me, but um, some of you have, have stated that you don't care if you're taken out in a tsunami or whatever, that you just want to be with the Lord in heaven, and any way it happens is fine with you. I mean, that is courage, and that is love, and that's just awesome. And the Lord continued here, and he said, But I did want to clarify that there will be an opportunity to repent between the first events and the rapture. This will greatly increase the harvest of souls. But it will be days, not a full-fledged revival. That will surely occur after the rapture. Souls in the thousands will come to me, and the chasm between good and evil will be defined sharply. This is when the great persecution will start. But Lord, you said as in the days of Noah, people will be marrying and given in marriage, and it will come upon them suddenly, as if to say without warning. He continued, no, in Noah's day they had plenty of warning, but they ignored the signs and laughed them to scorn, just as they do today. That pride must be broken, and these events will give them the chance Noah's generation did not have. Am I not the God of mercy? What will come upon them suddenly is a tragedy, and many will not be saved, will not have the opportunity to repent although none of you thoroughly understands 
to what extent I've knocked on the doors of their hearts during their lifetimes. He looked into my eyes most seriously. Claire, I want none to perish. None, not even one. Some will be given this last chance. Why do you think I've had you all praying for mercy, the Divine Mercy Chaplet? Do you suppose your prayers bounce off the walls? No, your prayers have bought more time, more grace, and more mercy. Again, it is the events that will come upon the whole earth suddenly. But those who survive will then have the opportunity to wake up and repent. So these things will not just affect America? No, my love, they will be felt by the whole world. We are approaching that day as we speak. Time is indeed running out. But I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And my heart is breaking for my lost children. It demands that I give one more chance for repentance. You have put the pieces of the puzzle together well, my love. Now it is time to tell my people, days are left to you. Get your house in order. How will we know it's time, Lord? Remember, you will reach a point of peace, deep peace. In that place, you will know it will be a supernatural peace that all will feel. Lord, will I get the thumb drive out? You will. And the thumb drive, by the way, guys, is going to be a collection of uh, all of the really important teachings for the left behind as well as music and the album tethered uh, and as well as things for faith like the things about Ron Wyatt and his discoveries with the Ark of the Covenant and Exodus and uh, all the evidence that he garnered from laboratories and a few teachings from other people that will really help and will be divided up into an index, into categories, so that you can uh, go to each category and, and look for the, the teaching that you need at that time, or they will be able to. I'll be able to find things because I'll be labeled according to the subject matter. So I've been working on that, and it's been really hard because it's huge. It's going to be about, oh gosh, about 15 gigabytes. By the way, the contents of the thumb drive should be done by next week, and we'll let you know where it's going to be on our website, and you can download it. But in order to circulate it to the world at large, we are going to be offering it on Amazon, and they have set rules about pricing for distribution. So uh, it's already paid for, so... <laughs> I think uh, it, they cost $10 a piece to make, but we'll be giving them away basically for maybe 4 or $5, depending on what Amazon requires for the distribution. But you can always download the contents yourself off of our website. And the same for the albums. We wanted to mark the albums and the books down really low, but they have certain rules. And if we want the distribution to go worldwide, we're stuck with it. So um, please forgive that, but you know that on our website, everything is a free download. That's going to be a wonderful, wonderful, extensive resource that people will be able to put on their phones or their iPads. And we chose a thumb drive because it will hold a tremendous amount of information uh, with the least amount of energy used to pull the information up. And it can be hidden, worn around the neck, uh, or tucked away somewhere, and nobody really knows what it is until they open it. Well, one of the things that we feel is important that we are leaving uh, behind for some people that we know are for my, the children that won't be taken is a hand crank, an energy crank, like you get sometimes with uh, these crank radios and so on, and they put out enough energy to power something like a cell phone or an iPad long enough for someone to be able to extract the information from it. So that's the reason why we're doing the thumb drive and it's something they can take with them anywhere they go and, and always have that information as long as they have 
just a little bit of electricity to charge their cell phone. We're anticipating a nuclear winter, and that's one reason why we will have a little solar power available to people, but for the most part we're relying on crank uh, devices to generate power to run something simple like a cell phone. That's a resource that we've almost got ready and I really, really want to finish that. So I asked the Lord, will I get the thumb drive out? Because not only do we have to finish it, but it needs to be uh, formatted and distributed. So he answered me, you will and it will be in distribution when this happens. Remember, all my promises to you are true, Claire. What I have promised, I will do. I gave you my word. I will accomplish it. Oh, thank you, Lord. And by the way, guys, that's got to be at least three weeks. It's got to be. There's no way it's going to be done sooner than that. So the Lord continued here, and he said, Now take your heart to prayer and work diligently at the same time. Finish this race. And to all of you, my people, I say finish the race. Finish your race. Look neither to the left or the right. Do not wander. Do not waste time. Be about my business when I come for you. Be praying or working, loving and serving in the capacity I have endowed you with. Make the most of your gifts in these last days. Gather as many souls as you can into my arms. Cast your net out into the deep for a catch and be prepared to labor hard to gather it in in that hour. There will be one last opportunity. Please be prepared for this. <laughs> 